Why beg for parts when your CNC machine is spitting out greeblies like a droid with a caffeine addiction? This might change everything. If I could go back and tell my younger self that in the future, from my own small shop in a garage, I could manufacture nearly anything I could imagine, I'm not sure I would have believed it. Yet that's the truth. We live in such a wonderful time for the maker revolution. We have access to so many methods of creation and the hobby of crafting from a multitude of materials has never been more within reach. If you've watched our channel for any length of time or you've seen us work on any number of projects, you've seen us work with a lot of different tools. From the humble table saw, routers, and drill press to the laser, resin, and FDM printers. There is not a tool that we shy away from save one, the CNC machine. Our avoidance of this particular bit of technology is not out of fear, but space. Our shop is not large enough for some of the galactically, insanely large CNC machines that are out there. So I've never really pursued this. That is until the creative folks at Makera reached out to us with an offer too intriguing to ignore. This is the Carvera Air. It's a desktop CNC machine and so much more. The team at Makera or a group of veteran makers who are proficient in electronics, machinery, and software, and their goal was to set out and make a CNC machine for makers. Specifically, machines that could fit on a desktop, which is 100% what caught my eye. We build a lot of niche things on this channel, as you well know if you've been around for any length of time. Specifically, we build nerdy Star Wars props and inspired pieces. In doing that, I've always seemed to run into the desire to have more unique parts for our builds. These parts aren't easy to find and some only exist in my imagination. Now we've found all sorts that work well. Simply juice leads, toilet flanges, and hard drive motors are staples around our world. We've also 3D modeled and even printed several parts as well. All of these are viable ways to add details to your project. But what if we had a way to manufacture some of these unique designs with absolute precision and out of more material? What if, say, we could machine these shapes from aluminum or a softer material that we could then mold and cast? That's what this machine will allow someone to do. Okay, we want to accomplish two things today. First, we want to give you a tour of this machine, a look under the hood, if you will. Secondly, we want to machine some of the parts we were talking about to see if this machine can really do all the things we're thinking it can. So starting off with the Carvera Air, don't let the size of this machine fool you. It's a beast. First of all, it's incredibly well built. It's heavy too, I might add, so you're going to need a buddy to help you move it into place. The work area of the machine is 11.8 inches wide by 7.9 inches deep, and you'll have about 5.1 inches in height. That's working directly off the build plate, but there's also a fourth access option, and we'll get to that here in a few. The build plate isn't super large, but for a desktop unit and for what it can machine, I think I'll quote Yoda, and that's perfect here. Size matters not. This machine is equipped with an auto probe that calibrates the machine precisely. This helps to make sure the working area of your material as well as the thickness are all correct before it starts to carve. It also looks at the material leveling to make sure that there's no uneven surfaces. Next, I want to talk to you about tool change. This machine has an epic tool change feature that makes swapping bits a matter of seconds. On some of the projects I've been testing, I've switched between two or three bits for the same piece of material. So having an easy way to swap the tool has been awesome. There are some additional features that are handy as well. It comes with a dust collection hose and a shoe to keep the work area as clean as possible. And it also has air assist to help remove debris and keep the bits cool when you're cutting something like aluminum or brass. The mount here on the side is for a tablet or a phone, as you can run their cam software on a mobile device as well. But I'll tell you one of my favorite aspects of this machine, and you're going to think it's silly, it's the lighting. The interior lighting gives you perfect coverage to really see what's going on at all times. And the indicator LED lighting is great for seeing what the state of the machine is at a glance. This is a wonderfully crafted machine, and I'm really only scratching the surface in this video today. All that said, what about actually using the tool? The user interface can be just as important, if not more. Software can be the intimidating aspect and off-putting experience that people have with tools. 
That's not the case here. Makera has a program called Makera Cam. So if you're not familiar with Cam, it stands for Computer Aided Manufacturing. The software is designed to import your 2D or 3D files and then create the tool paths needed to make the machine work on the material that you have in place. Now, I'm not gonna get into the weeds on this in today's video. Honestly, I'm a total noob when it comes to using a CNC and the workflow. There's still a lot I need to wrap my head around. That said, it's a tribute to what Makara has done with their software. They have an extensive library of tutorials on their YouTube channel that give you enough information combined with a very straightforward program to get you up and running on a project quickly. It was intuitive enough for me that I was able to take this piece of walnut here, get it mounted in place on the machine, and then import the file into Makara Cam. From there, I was able to work through the tools I would need to create the tool path and then set the CNC working machine on my design. I figured our Fat Bantha logo was a great place to start, and by the time I sand and stain this little piece, it's gonna be nice sitting behind the bar. Carving on wood is fun, but what about carving out of aluminum? That was one aspect I was really looking forward to and also completely intimidated by. I've always wanted to create, or should I say machine, aspects of our droid interface kit out of metal, but I never had the tools to do it until now. Each of these little brackets, as you can see right here, have a little bit of a ridge on them that helps hold on to the material. And then in our toolkit provided this awesome hex head tool. Now that's really secure in place. I'm going to be using this 3.175 millimeter by 12 millimeter single flute bit for metal. We need to get a collar on this. In Carvera Air's kit, this device here will actually help us put a collar on. And they send you a bag here of collars. Turn this and it's going to shove that collar into the appropriate position. Okay, and we take this piece off and now our collar is set perfectly where it needs to be. So I pulled one of our wheel designs and scaled it down to fit the sample aluminum that was provided to us in the kit. This tooling was perfect until I hit a snag. I'll tell you, I was super bummed that this piece didn't finish. But I also realized that this wasn't the machine, it was my inexperience. When we didn't get all the way through the aluminum, you can see right here, the bit caught an edge. Fortunately, the whole machine registered that that happened and it stopped the spindle from spinning and it went into shutdown mode. With CNC, there are a lot of things to consider. Spindle speed, feed rate, and which type of tools and tool paths you're running on specific material. These are all things that will come in time and practice with this machine. One material I was sent along with the kit that I immediately fell in love with was what they're calling epoxy tooling board. I think it's a bit like wren shaped material, but a lot less expensive. This stuff machines like a dream. The finished results of the material are perfect. It's soft enough that the machine doesn't have to work too hard, but it's rigid enough to hold up against any types of cutting. It hit me that there are a couple of different options I can take with this stuff. Number one. I can machine parts, give them a light sanding, and then I can mold and cast these parts. That would give me the ability to do some cold casting with aluminum, because I'd like to simulate some of my own custom versions of the hard drive motor for some of these panels I'm building. We can do 3D models and then cut those out. The other aspect is that I can create designs and then prototype out of the tooling board to make sure the design works well, that it cuts and carves the way it should before I use a more expensive material like aluminum or brass. In just these few shapes that I was able to design in Fusion 360, I was able to get them fully cut out in such a short period of time. And as you can see, they fit perfectly.
So what about a fourth access option? This opens up another level entirely of possibilities. I found the installation of the fourth axis to be incredibly easy. And as much as that might seem like a small detail, to me, it's actually the most important thing with tools. I find that with any tool, if it slows my production down, it's a tool I'm unlikely to use. I'm amazed at how many tool manufacturers out there have a process that can sometimes take an hour or more to get set up or to a point where you can actually work on the project you want. I'm thrilled to say that is not the case with the Carvera Air. This process of installing the fourth axis took me less than 10 minutes to install and have it ready to go. The process of securing the stock in place is simple and straightforward, and the tutorial videos that Makara has on their YouTube channel are very helpful as they take you through step-by-step -step of the entire process of the setup and getting this machine tooling. The actual machining process is pretty mesmerizing. Following the toolpath as it steps along the model and literally carves the shape out of a block of wood or whatever material is super fascinating. This piece turned out okay, but that's not an issue with the CNC. I have a lot to learn about which bit should be used for which stage of the carve. For this piece, I did a rough end pass to remove the bulk material, but for my finishing pass, I chose the wrong bit, and it struggled to get through to cleaning up all the corners and the edges the way that I had intended. Again, it's just my learning a CNC, the bits, the feed rates, the speeds, and all of the things that are gonna come with using this over and over again. At the end of the day, with a bit more time with the machine, I know I can dial this in and start producing some machined perfect parts to go along with everything else. And when you're looking at both the, the fourth axis to turn these and then keeping these flat on the bed, you know, the combination of what you can come up with, you know, giving yourself an interesting base and then allowing yourself to machine another part that slides in and build that vertically by carving it on the fourth axis. Just, I'm really excited about the potential of the different components and parts and pieces that we can build to achieve some really unique looks to some of these individual Greebly bits that we want to design. Lastly, this machine has an optional 5 watt diode laser accessory. So laser engraving your material on top of CNCing is all possible in one machine. I have to say that sort of blew my mind. My mind is racing with all the additional projects or even just parts for projects that we can create with this machine. And we haven't even touched on the fact that the Carvera Air can work with the cam part of Fusion 360. We say this to every vendor that reaches out to us for a sponsorship or some kind of collaboration, that our number one criteria for saying yes and sharing with you is that the product has to work well and it has to be value to you. Now, not all of you watching this channel right now are looking to purchase a CNC machine, but if you were or you are now, we've linked everything you need to see the Carvera Air and the other great things that Makara have to offer in the description below. We want to thank Makara for generously providing the Carvera Air to us, letting us test it out. And we hope this was both helpful and interesting to all of you, because we'll see you the next time we build something out of nothing.